Hey guys, I am finally looking at another reason to spend your hard-earned money, the Sennheiser Momentum 4 Wireless. It's got up to 60 hours of battery life, and according to the website, that is with ANC. That's about double the battery of both the Sony WH-1000XM5 and XM4. Now, that's all fine and well, having more battery is important, but that's not all we care about on this channel because we're going to talk about what I like about them, their sound, call quality, and noise cancelling. And what could be better compared to both Sony headphones, the XM4 and XM5, because those are its chief competitors. First, I recommend that you listen to this video with headphones because we are going to listen to some binaural sound samples and that's the only way you can hear the stereo, the details. I've also split this video into chapters, so if you want to, you can navigate to the parts you're interested in. And do subscribe and tap the bell button to stay notified for more Sennheiser-related content. Before we move on to the sound samples, first, let's talk about sound quality. I think the M4s sound a little more on the bright and exciting side in the treble with great sub-frequency bass extension. So if you like listening to chamber music, you are going to get more sizzle from wind and string instruments, and it also does deliver a lot of low-frequency gravity without the bloat. They do perform well for vocals, there's a focus on clarity and track separation there, but compared to the XM4 or XM5, you won't get as much body or fullness in the vocals. This frequency sweep shows that compared to the XM4, there is a dip in the lower mids between 80 Hz to 300 Hz. That is something that you can hear from the following sound samples. These are the Momentum 4s compared side by side with the Sony's. Guess we weren't meant to be. I know we had problems. I thought we could fix them. But we got tired. There's nothing left to do but to say goodbye and try to move on. I'll get over you. Only wish that I knew how to go on. Baby, you and me were so messy together. Even if we tried, we'd be stuck here forever. By the way guys, if you want to compare the sound quality of the Sennheiser Momentum 4 to other headphones and do it at your own leisure, head over to loudandwireless.com's sound samples page, link in the description. Also, its sound staging is taller and more airy than the Sony's, which adds a bit more immersion, but at the expense of less impact. Of course, if you need more bass impact, you can boost that bass in the Sennheiser Smart Control app. You can do this with a simple graphic EQ, some EQ presets, or a bass boost mode. Somehow the bass boost mode doesn't quite work for me. I find the manual EQ settings to be much more effective at boosting the bass. There is something else that I didn't like about the M4 sound. When I was testing them, I thought they sounded a little weird, like the soundstage leans a little to the left. And during my frequency sweep, it shows that the left and right drivers are not balanced. Like you can see there's a lot of variance there. You can usually see some variance between ear cups with other headphones too, but not this much variance. I don't think it's a manufacturing issue. I think it can be fixed through software update. But if this is a widespread thing, it is definitely not a good start for the Momentum 4. But assuming that it can be fixed through software, it is going to be through the Smart Control app. This app displays battery information. You've got ANC, transparency, sound zones, which triggers your preferred ANC level according to your locations assigned by you. Overall, it is a clean, full-featured app, and it's got its own graphic EQ settings as well as EQ presets, like I said. But I did run into some bugs while using it, which I'll get into at the end of this video. Just like the Sony XM5s, these also have adaptive noise cancelling. After using it for a bit, I don't like it because the switching is a lot more abrupt 
and frequent than Sony's Auto NC Optimizer. But the Momentum Fours do allow you to turn off adaptive ANC. Now, for people who own the Sony XM5s, being able to switch off adaptive ANC is something that everyone's been requesting. Seems like Sennheiser was paying attention and giving people what they want, unlike Sony. But how does its noise cancelling compare to the Sony's with adaptive noise cancelling turned off? We're gonna test that with some really loud cafe style background noise. I think its ANC performance is quite impressive, very close to what the Sony XM4s have to offer, but the Mark 5s simply did better at cancelling mid-range frequencies. This means more silence from the sound of human chatter. There is something that you should know about the Momentum 4's noise cancelling. You can't turn it off. There is no off button. You can only bring down the noise cancelling level or maybe even give it a little bit of a transparency, but there is no off button. But I don't think it's such a big issue because the main reason why somebody will want to turn off ANC is to save battery. And this already has phenomenal battery life with ANC. In terms of transparency, I think it emphasizes the lower frequencies a bit more than the XM5 or the XM4. Now, of course, it is quite transparent. I can still have a conversation with people when I set the transparency to full strength, but you can tell that the ambient noise sounds a bit more bloaty. Right now, we're gonna compare its call quality to the Sony's in both quiet and noisy conditions using the same background noise as before and some wind noise coming from this fan over here. I am now making a phone call in a quiet place using the Sennheiser Momentum. I am now making a phone call in a quiet place using the Sony WH-Xm5. I am now making a phone call in a quiet place using the Sony WH-Xm4. I'm now making a phone call in a noisy place using the Sennheiser Momentum 4. I'm now making a phone call in a noisy place using the Sony WH Council XM5. Oh, by the way, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I have now made a phone call in a noisy place with the Sony WH-1000XM4. Its call quality is definitely an improvement over the Sony Mark IV, but compared to the Mark V, in noisy conditions, the Sennheisers do let in more background noise and wind noise. However, in quiet conditions, I think the Sennheiser's voice quality is similar to the Mark V's. To conclude, there are some things that I like about the Momentum 4s, like its design. There are so many improvements there. Compared to the Momentum 3, it's smaller, lighter, and it comes in a hard carry case. It also has multi-point pairing, APTX adaptive support. Even the way we interact with the headphones is so much simpler than competitors. Only one button is required for power and Bluetooth pairing, and this gigantic touch panel handles everything else like playback and volume. Other headphones have a dedicated button for toggling noise cancelling and transparency, but not the M4s. Instead, the touch panel 
also lets you toggle A and C by double tapping and pinching in or out to control the degree of A and C or transparency. And of course, its battery life is awesome. I've ran tests on it and it was down like 10% after 5 hours of playing music at 50% volume. This means it'll take about 50 hours to completely discharge the battery. So in terms of battery life, these are tops. Overall, these are one of the most innovative products I've seen, definitely from Sennheiser, but compared to the XM5s, these do have a stiffer headband, which clamps tighter, so it squeezes my nape a little more if I hang it around my neck. Also, when I'm wearing this, it feels tighter. Not by a whole lot, but it's definitely tighter than the Sony XM5, even the XM4. It's not uncomfortable, but I kind of wish that the cushions had more padding to mitigate the clamp. The app is great, but it could be more bug-free. Sometimes the noise cancelling adjustments do nothing. Sometimes the screen is unresponsive. This app is definitely a lot nicer than Sony's app, but it's got bugs. So that kind of cancels out the benefits. However, the biggest con for me is the unbalanced drivers. Now, there are things that audio brands can get away with, such as less battery. We've seen that with the AirPods Max. But unbalanced drivers actually affect sound staging, and that is a huge oversight on Sennheiser's part. Let's hope that this can indeed be fixed through software update. We'll see. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more content, oh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> I almost dropped this. If you want to see more content about these and Isis, get subscribed and tap the bell button so that you never miss another video from this channel. Smash like and share if you like this video. A big shout out to my Patreon supporters. You can also join us on the world's most popular gaming chat app, Discord. If you want to hang out or chat, link is in the box down below. Click here to compare the sound quality of these Sony headphones to the AirPods Max or watch another video from this channel.